Hello everyone, my greetings to you all. I am Abhishek Kashyap and you are watching my talk on what I have titled The Bright Shade of COVID-19 An Opportunity in Adversity. You might, I find, uh, well, first I would like to thank the organizers of HEDRA inviting, for inviting me in the first conference on uh, language and the pandemic. I feel honored and privileged to be here. So my title, you might find my topic a bit intriguing and you might ask, what brightness can I find in the pandemic? That is true. Evidently, all that COVID-19 has done to us is disturbed and destroyed our normal life. And searching brightness in pandemic does not sound amusing at all. It has swallowed millions of lives across the world. What you see on the screen is the figure of deaths according to Worldometer. So according to this report, about 3.4 million people have died because of COVID-19 infection. Uh, this, while I'm speaking, this figure might have already changed, grown up. But we also know that um, deaths are hugely reported uh, deaths because of the COVID-19 is hugely reported. Yeah. And actual death figures might be way bigger than this. The pandemic has impacted our social and emotional well-being. The world became a cage. About 6 billion people in lockdown at the same time. It never happened before in the history of mankind. The Pandemic has effectively destroyed the economy and trade across the world and made so many people jobless, unemployed. There is no music, there is nothing that can look satisfying uh, about pandemic. However, one thing that this pandemic has done is it has exposed our healthcare infrastructure. The system that we have created over a long time and many of us felt confident to manage things with the existing resources, we boasted of our uh, healthcare facilities. Clearly, it all was a wrong estimate. It has also exposed our preparedness and ability to manage a crisis of this magnitude. And here comes the relevance of my talk. So I present to you some data from World Health Organization. And for that, I take you to the World Health Organization's website. Yeah. So what you see here is a visual representation of number of doctors per thousand people. So the uh, dark blue refers to higher density of doctors and the light blue uh, refers to the lower density. So the pandemic is a hard reminder that we need to build a better infrastructure and resources. And this is clearly seen um, in the disparity that we find here. While on the one hand, you see in, the, uh, in Russia, 44.4 doctors, in China, 19.8 doctors for every 10,000 population. And we also see India, uh, nine, just 9.28 doctors. It has just increased recently in 2018. The uh, data which I'll show you now, it was way less than this, right? So we see here, even we have cases where in a country like Zambia, we have we don't, have, we don't have even one doctor for to serve a thousand, uh, 10,000 people, right? And this is our stark reality. So this is pandemic is, has reminded us what 
we can improve and where we can improve, how we can make our life better. Like, let's look uh, at, at some figures. So, yeah. Yeah, again, it's uh, just a few countries and it has the 2018 data of the total number of population. So we different uh, numbers in Australia, we have 37.6 um, doctors for every 10,000 uh, population and Canada has 24.25, China 19.8, we have seen just now, Germany 42, India in 2018 was just below seven doctors, not even seven doctors for to serve 10,000 population. What is surprising here is Italy. Italy has the, uh, while it has the, such a high number of uh, doctors, 79.27 doctors for to serve 10,000 population. But we also saw Italy where the COVID-19 situation was the worst last year because of the sudden outbreak of coronavirus, the entire health infrastructure collapsed. In fact, one of the best health infrastructure collapsed we are seeing just now that Italy has the highest number of doctors to serve every 10,000 population in the world. And now we see the way India is suffering because of the second phase of COVID outbreak. Anyway, the current situation in India was inevitable because of several factors, including high population density, Lower, lower healthcare facility and infrastructure and lack of awareness among people of different, of, uh, different I mean, people of uh, different categories. So we have absolutely severe lack of awareness among people about their health and wellness. We can endlessly discuss this, uh, the healthcare facility and infrastructure in different countries. Uh, we can present the data of hospitals, beds, ICU beds, ventilators, the number of healthcare professionals. Beyond doubt, these all require reassessment and massive improvement. We are seeing that no country on this planet has sufficient facilities to manage, manage the crisis of COVID-19 magnitude, right? However, what is more significant to me, these things or the you know, uh, improvement in hospitals, beds, ICUs and so on are very tangible. You can see them, clearly see them and people can work out. For me, what is more significant is to understand how we behaved as common citizen. What is most significant for me to understand how we have responded to this crisis and what further we can do to ensure we are better off next time. I will focus on India as a case in point. One thing that this pandemic has taught us is that we are often ill-prepared to manage such a crisis. So this is a lesson for us to be better prepared for future. This is an opportunity to identify flaws in healthcare system and fix them. Of course, countries have begun to work on them. They have many countries we never, we did not have even uh, thought about producing masks. They are preparing and manufacturing them. They are manufacturing uh, personal protective equipments and so on. And they are trying to be self-reliant, reliant, which is good news. But let me take you to the series of events that followed in the wake of COVID-19 outbreak last year. Again, I'm speaking with reference to the COVID situation in India. This will help us understand how the country responded, responded to this crisis. And when I say how the country responded, responded to the crisis, I do not mean just the government. I mean, every citizen of the country, in my opinion, citizens of, the, of a country has bigger responsibility to play than the government because they are bigger. They are the ones who choose the government. They are the ones who are huge in number and their act impacts everyone. 
So on the 22nd March, 2020, the government of India announced Janta curfew. What you see here, Janta curfew. So Janta is a Hindi word. It means people or public and curfew is cur curfew. So by this, the government urged the country for voluntary self-isolation. When the government did not find it working, then it announced on the 24th March, 2020, a nationwide lockdown for 21 days. When the lockdown was announced, the number of confirmed positive cases in the country, uh, confirmed, coronavirus, uh, confirmed cases of coronavirus infection in the country was approximately 500. The decision of 21 days lockdown was taken in order to break the chain of massive uh, break the chain of virus and stop the spread. People would say would, would stay stay home, maintain physical distance, not social distance. I don't find social distance social distancing very appropriate because all we needed was social distancing and you can uh, all we needed was physical distancing. And you can stay socially connected. You don't have to distance yourself socially. If, just even if you are staying at home, you can do that. Maintain your social network by uh, social media, telephones, texts, emails, and so on. So I find physical distance more appropriate. Well, the idea was that the people would stay at home, uh, maintain physical distance, a handful of, handful of people infected by the virus would be cured and the life would be back to normal. So this was the idea, very fantastic, wow. But what happened after that, after the announcement of lockdown was beyond sanity. I would rather say what happened was insane. What happened was my mass migration of people from one state to another, one city to another, one part of the country to another part. The workers who were away from their home city began to return home and they were ready to pay any price for their return, even their life. So they traveled by train, by bus, uh, by cycles, by even walking, right? So many of them set out uh, set out to travel, uh, set out to walk hundreds of kilometers to reach home. They traveled inside the bus and also at the rooftop. Well, so when people was expected to stay home in lockdown and protect their themselves and their family and friends, they triggered the panic button and they were out on road, which led to a rapid spread of the virus. And you know, uh, made the situation uncontrollable. Many died on road while walking back home. Many carried the virus with them and helped to spread the, virus, spread the virus. Now then, the question for them is to ask themselves, was it worth dying on road, hungry, thirsty, and carrying the virus to, the, to infect their family and friends, many of whom ended up in hospital and died. So we have to understand why this migration situation arose. The most important reason why people fail to understand the rationale and efficacy of the lockdown is the lack of awareness. Awareness comes from education and clearly we have not done enough to educate ourselves. Here comes the role of language researchers Linguists, we need to work together with healthcare professionals. Every problem, healthcare professionals as well as common people. Health, um, every problem is an opportunity to solve the problem. And the COVID-19 pandemic too is an opportunity for us to identify the sectors of research, areas of research and prepare ourselves to manage such a crisis more efficiently. The people you see in these photos, 
um, are low wage workers. They are either illiterate or have low level of education and they have no awareness of health. You would be surprised to know that many of them were found saying on television that COVID is just a hype created by rich people and that it is a disaster of the rich. It's, it's a disease of the, risk, of the rich. Their education level did not allow them to understand the gravity of the situation. And the reality that disease does not distinguish between the rich and the poor. So our responsibility as a language professional, as a researcher, is to contribute to uplift their level of awareness and empower them to understand that economic status does not guarantee that they will not be infected, the poor or the rich will not be infected, rather the adverse or reverse is more possible. So they need to protect themselves. It is important that we produce materials in local languages to inform people about their rights and their responsibilities, what they should do uh, and what they should not do, right? In essence, we need to uh, help them understand to take the right decision in favor of their own and as well as the society. India is not known for conducting um, linguistic research in healthcare sector. A general understanding is that uh, healthcare is the subject matter of healthcare professionals like doctors, nurses, pharmacists, scientists, and linguistic research is an altogether different matter, right? So this is the common understanding. As a result, the research on healthcare communication is scarce in India. It is high time that uh, linguists and healthcare professionals understood the need to join hands, collaborate more, more actively and work together. It is hard, for example, to find a good qualitative research on how communication between doctor and patient takes place in Hindi or in Punjabi or in any Indian language or even Indian English. Such uh, studies are required not because we are discussing this with reference to the pandemic, but such studies are required in order to understand the sensitivity of health and wellness, which becomes even more significant during the pandemic, like the one we are facing right now. The linguistic research in healthcare domain is required in order to provide a better service to the community. Such research is important in various ways. For example, it can help provide training material or training material for healthcare professionals and prepare them for customer service, a better customer service, right? So, we need, to we need research projects both to make common people aware of their rights and responsibilities. And at the same time, people, uh, we need projects to develop materials in local languages for training programs in healthcare sectors. Look, India is a land of hundreds of languages. Many of them are major languages that are spoken by millions of people. Um, they are used in daily life, including uh, healthcare and understanding of how language is used in, uh, in the applicable domain of healthcare, applicable, I'm using the term of Michael Halliday, applied domain of healthcare is an urgent need. This is a massive challenge, but this is also a massive opportunity. Thank you.